Welcome to the e-commerce marketing podcast, the highly rated digital marketing podcast that provides weekly digital marketing tips and strategies from some of the world's top digital marketers and e-commerce entrepreneurs that will help you take your digital marketing to the next level. Sit back and enjoy this power-packed episode hosted by Arlen Robinson, who is an e-commerce entrepreneur and digital marketing expert with over 20 years of experience. Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own affiliate program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. My name is Arlen Robinson and I am your host. And today we have a very special guest, Matt Edmondson, who is best known in the world of e-commerce. He's an e-commerce, his own e-commerce businesses have actually generated over 50 million in worldwide sales. And he's coached companies with a combined turnover in excess of 100 million. Matt is the CEO of Orion, a group of companies dedicated to helping those who sell online deliver e-commerce. Orion offers e-commerce coaching as well as a range of done-for-you e-commerce services, which include worldwide fulfillment and e-commerce marketing. His media company can also help those interested in live streaming and podcasting. And when he's not working on digital things, you'll find Matt hanging out with his family or in his workshop as he is a passionate woodworker. Welcome to the podcast, Matt. Oh, it's great to be here. I was just listening to that introduction with avid interest going, oh, who's this fella? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you've got a, quite a background. Definitely seems like you've uh, been involved in the e-commerce space for quite a bit and then have quite, you know, have assisted a lot of businesses uh, to have, uh, a, a, you know, pretty big impact. So that's definitely, uh, you know, commendable for sure. And, uh, you know, today I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, as before we were recording, I said, you know, um, even though this is a podcast, this is an e-commerce podcast, a lot of times we don't talk about podcasting. I think maybe only <laughs> one other time in the history of this podcast that we talk about podcasting. But wow. today is the day that we're going to kind of dig, dig a little bit more deeper into podcasting for e-commerce businesses and how do they mm-hmm. take advantage of this whole medium of podcasting uh, to help grow their business. Uh, but, you know, before we do get into all of that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background and specifically how you got into what you're doing today? Well, firstly, thank you for having me uh, on the show. It's great to be here. I'm looking forward to the conversation. And um, yeah, as you as you quite rightly said, I've been around e-commerce for a little while, as we say, uh, about 20 years now. I and mean, if you, um, I don't know about you, Arlen, but me in my head, uh, when you work in digital, every year is like a dog year, right? It actually, <laughs> just because the technology changes so quickly and so fast. So um, if one year is seven years, that means I've been around 140 years. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. well, uh, I, I I got you beat by a little bit on that. So. Yeah, so, yeah, no, well done, well done. I just I just say I'm a bit of an e-commerce dinosaur. Um, it's um, I've, I've been around a while, so I got into it purely by accident. I was um, in the late 90s. I started a web development agency as as a bit of a side hustle to my job which was bizarrely selling saunas and steam rooms and health spas and designing those. And I just decided to start coding and and um, I did it as a bit of a web hustle. I was getting married, you know, I needed to make some extra income, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I set up my first web store um, in 2002, uh, selling some products which a friend of mine had. He just had these products and I'm like, dude, can I sell those online? I don't know if I'm going to sell anything. Uh, and I don't want to buy any stock off you, but if I sell it, I'll buy it and ship it out. And he was like, no, that's totally fine. And so we did that. And he ended up buying the business off me six months later because it just took off. And then I was in love with e-commerce from that point on. You know, the first day you wake up um, and somebody somewhere in the world is purchased from you whilst you're asleep. Yeah, That is yeah. a beautiful feeling. Let me tell you, a beautiful feeling. And so I, I, I got hooked right then. Right. Yeah. But I, I definitely know the feeling, you know, on our end, we are uh, e-commerce, but a SaaS company, um, e-commerce mm-hmm. SaaS. So, you know, kind of a flavor of e- e- e-commerce, the software as a service. But yeah, when we 
uh, kind of made the transition. And we had a kind of a similar background. We started off as a full service, you know, web development agency mm. and um, transitioned to creating our own suite of solutions. And yeah, it was pretty amazing when we we kicked off our first SaaS solution and we got orders overnight and we woke yeah. up and we saw <laughs> magically these orders appearing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a great feeling. We've been hooked as you, as you, as you have as well ever since. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, thank you for sharing that, that background and um Appreciate you having you on as well. Um, but, you know, where we wanted to kind of dive into, as I mentioned, is we're going to be talking about podcasting, all about podcasting mm-hmm. for e-commerce businesses. And, you know, I, I told you before we started recording this podcast, we've been going since, you know, about 2014. And back then, this was really before podcasts were really a thing. Um, yeah. Now they're they're exploded. You know, I think the stats mm-hmm. show based on Apple Podcasts directory, they've got over 2 million podcasts you know registered there which is you know quite a bit but mm-hmm. it, it, it also kind of a good time because um when you look at those numbers it's not like the amount of websites that are out mm-hmm. there it's not overly saturated so even though podcasts are really big there's a lot of podcasts it's, it's a good time and so as far as like an e-commerce business I think the the main question that a lot of the business owners and e-commerce marketers are are probably wondering if they haven't launched a podcast and they're thinking about it is, you know, what what do I do? What what topic do I do that's going to, you know, be interesting and at the same time kind of help the business? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a lot of ways you can approach that question right but for me whenever i think about it with uh with e-commerce and i'm thinking about podcasting and we can get into the reasons why i think podcasting is a good idea but fundamentally i'm looking to do a podcast around the key reasons people are buying from me okay so i'm not looking to do a podcast about my product necessarily that's it's not like you know, you could do a podcast a bit like a QVC channel, I suppose, if you really wanted to. But right. that's not the kind of thing that I'm talking about. It's more, um, can I pick a topic? Uh, that What's the reason that customers are buying from me? Can I pick a topic in that area? So a great example would be um, Nike, right? They've got a podcast called Trained, which is, you know, and they interview athletes and performance coaches and all that sort of stuff. Well, that makes sense for Nike because that you they understand why people are buying from them, right? So they're going to do a podcast around that. Patagonia, they have a podcast called, I think it's called We the Power or We Are the Power or something like that, which is around sustainability, which is the core, you know, focus of their brand. I mean, especially now, uh, it was this week, wasn't it? The owner of Patagonia has just basically given his whole company over to um, fighting climate change. And so um so i love their poster on on their website saying the earth is now our main shareholder which i think is phenomenal um but but so they understand that people are coming to patagonia to buy that to buy their products um they're interested in sustainability so guess what were they going to do they're going to do a podcast around that and they're going to have a voice around that so i think when you're in e-commerce you you do something where you want to have a voice and that's either why either where your brand values are um or you do it around the key reason why customers are buying from you and if those two things overlap well that's 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 even better so that's for me how i would figure out the topic of what to talk about yeah that that makes a lot of sense and um when you mentioned patagonia and them kind of fully embracing um you know climate change as their kind of mission for their business i you know I, i've talked to so many business owners that have been on the podcast and just in general and the kind of key thing that I've seen over the years is that businesses these days, it's its a little bit different. A lot of times businesses these days are now attaching themselves to a mission or not necessarily maybe attaching themselves to a mission, but making their mission a lot more prominent to the mm. end customer. Because uh, these days people are, are, are savvy and they're really um, interested in making sure their money spent, their dollars are going towards yeah. companies that have a conscience, you know, exactly. whether it's thinking about the, uh, you know, our, our, our planet, whether it's thinking about um, social issues, that type of thing. And so mm-hmm. um, it's those types of things that maybe before a business wouldn't necessarily, you know, speak to, even though they had those values, they may not necessarily put that out there these days, the more the better, you know, the, it's better that you do put all of that out there because 
people are are, 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 are watching and everything is really um, available online. So no matter what it is that you're mm-hmm. supporting, people will be able to find out. And, um, you know, if, if you're able to use a podcast, like you said, to, um, you know, align uh, your your values, your company values with a message that people mm-hmm. you know resonate with. You know, it's just a great way for you know people to to just really get to know you. The you know if, if you're going to do it as a business owner, mm-hmm. know your know your brand and really kind of get their arms around who you really are. So yeah, I think it's it's just a great way to connect. Um, you know for sure. Now. Um, I think one of the things that a brand may struggle with if we're thinking about creating a podcast is, of course, at the end of the day, they want to sell more products. They want to sell Mm -hmm. more services. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the same time, I think it's a fine line between informing and then selling. What what do you Mm -hmm. think are some ways that you can structure a podcast and not be overly salesy where you're kind of pushing your products or service down people's throats? Um, but still informing. There is kind of a, is there a specific strategy? Yeah, I think the main you become your main sponsor, right? So if you've listened to a podcast and you you said, uh, you know, welcome to uh, the marketing podcast, um, and today's show sponsor is, uh, you know, this particular product or this particular brand. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you become your own sponsor. So the way I would do it is I'd say, right, I'm going to do, like I said, with Patagonia, I'm going to do a podcast around sustainability. So I'd be like, welcome to the We Are The Power podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Patagonia. We are the home of sustainable fashion. If you want to help change the planet and look good at the same time, I don't know what their marketing spiel is, uh, as you can probably tell. But in effect, it would be that. And that's all you need because you're just, and podcasting is not necessarily direct selling. It is uh it's just building your brand right building you can also and i've seen this work super well is um do like a an faq type thing so if you're going to do like an interview podcast which i strongly recommend you do but if you do like a a sort of a an interview podcast um and at the end of it or during it you can go right well we've got we're just going to do this q a session we've had this question come in from one of our customers and we're going to answer that question um and so then you answer that question. Uh, and that's another good way to sort of build brand uh, and 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 bring that sort of sales without being direct selling. It's just start answering your customer questions um, yeah. and recording it as a podcast is quite extraordinary, really. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and, and another thing that can be done as far as answering those customers' questions, those FAQs, turning them into a podcast is, you know, a lot of... Um, times these days anything you put out there can be repurposed so Mm -hmm. that podcast can then be turned around into a blog post can then Mm -hmm. be turned around and and cut up into social media posts um videos you name it i mean you can kind of slice and dice it you know a hundred and well that's the beauty of it isn't it so you know you you create a podcast you're creating so much content it's You know, and there's a lot of overwhelm, isn't there? Especially if you're starting an e-commerce business, like how do I do social media? How do I do blocks? How do and there's all these things I'm supposed to do, and I haven't. It becomes overwhelmed. So I'm like, well, do a podcast interview. You know, someone that's going to meet a certain set of criteria, but let's interview them. Well, that creates the content. So and like you say, you can slice that, and you can get ten sort of fifteen thirty second snippets from every podcast. Post those every day in Instagram Reels um tiktok and youtube shorts mm-hmm. well you've got some really incredible outreach there and all you've done is just taking these sort of 15 second snippets and that might be a question you know so one of the questions you get asked might be um you know is sustainability a real thing or is it fake well i, I can create a 30 second snippet around that put that out there and it'll, it'll get a whole lot of traction yeah. and all it says at the end of the reel is you know listen to the podcast and whatever your podcast is called, sponsored by whatever your company name is called, and you're building that brand. And um, but you're making, like you say, you're, the repurposing of it is so so powerful, um, and such a beautiful thing because it it just makes your life so much easier, especially if you're a solopreneur or if you're yeah. just a, a sort of a smaller company with with sort of fewer resources. Yeah. Um, so no, you can definitely get on that, and that makes a lot of sense to me. You're totally yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, um, you know, I know with you, of course, being in the industry, you know, for as long as you have been and been having your own podcast and being on podcasts, um, you've probably kind of seen the gamut of 
of uh, things and technologies mm -hmm. that are used to kind of put all of this together. And I think we're at kind of at a point now where there are, um, you know, it's kind of like you're a kid in the candy store where you're trying to decide <laughs> what to use when you're putting yeah. this whole your production together, because uh, there's a lot out there. What Are there some things that you would recommend for an e-commerce business that, you know, wants to get out there, they don't know where this is going to go, they may not want to spend a whole lot of money mm -hmm. on production, but they still want something quality. Um, what are some technologies, equipment um, that will require a minimal amount of upfront expenses to get this you know, off the, you know, off the road. Yeah, sure. I, and I totally understand that. I think for me, the biggest thing that everybody has that you can use for podcasting is your smartphone. Um, the cameras on those are brilliant and you do want to record video by the way, but the cameras are brilliant. The microphones are, are, are good, more than adequate for a podcast. Yep. Um, and if you're doing the interview style, well, like you, you can use zoom, right? You don't need any expensive software to do that with. You can do that from any computer um, so you, you can do these podcasts with the technology that you have. There are services out there, software services like Squadcast and Riverside, which you can use. Um, I use a piece of software called Ecamm on the Mac. You can use um, Stream, Stream Duck, Duck Yard, Duck Yard, I think it's called something like Stream Duck. So I can't remember. There's a duck involved anyway in the logo. Um, but there's all these pieces of software um, that you can use to to create them so you don't really need a whole you don't need expensive equipment but when you get into it and you find that actually you're starting to get traction then you might want to invest um, mm -hmm. in something you know i've got a nice camera with a nice lens i've got a nice microphone i've got a sound desk i've got um uh, you can't see it obviously but i've got a monitor in front of my camera so when i'm looking at you i'm looking down the camera lens so it's, it's a lot more personal interaction so you can really go to town on it yeah, uh, but you definitely don't need to start there. So my my advice is start with your smartphone and don't let the technology talk you out of yeah. uh, doing the podcast. Just start. That's the main thing. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the fundamental thing you've got to do. And the most important thing in any video is actually the audio. That's the other right. thing that I'd say. Yeah. So yeah, make very, sure your audio is good. Very important. Very important. Over over the video for sure. Even mm -hmm. though video course it's huge these days i totally um, rec um agree with that yeah you got to have a good mic and these days there's there's a lot of mics that you can get that are pretty affordable mm -hmm. uh as well that'll get you well, just your pressure. earphones your, your airpods or whatever it is you wear the mics on those are, are great you know and as long as you're in a quiet room mm -hmm. no problem no problem yeah, so for sure for sure for sure um yeah it's uh another thing i want to add to that is also like you said you just need to get out there get it going and then i think the key thing also once you do get started i mean whether or not you get traction initially or not regardless whatever you put out there like we said earlier you can use that and you can repurpose it even if you know you're not getting too many downloads you're not getting mm -hmm. much traction you can you know try it and use it different places but i think the key thing then is your consistency of the production of it. So if you're going to do a weekly podcast, make sure you, you put that out every week uh, mm -hmm. or whatever day you, you, you decide, whatever time frame, so that people that do pick it up and start um, subscribing to it, you know, can can look forward to it. They may expect it at a certain mm -hmm. time. And you just want to always be consistent with it for sure. Um, and and uh, make sure you get that out there at the uh, you know, at the same time, what weekly Absolutely. or monthly or however you want to do it. Yeah, the um, power is in showing up, right? And and it's worth saying, and oh, you've got some experience with this as well, haven't you, right? That mm -hmm. when you start a podcast, you're not getting 10,000 downloads from day one, right? right there right. are stories where that happens, but let's be real, it's not going to. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you're a small e-commerce brand, if you're getting 50 or 100 downloads whenever you release an episode, that's great. That's yeah, really, yeah. really great. Mm -hmm. um so we're not after massive numbers to to move the to move the, the the dial if you like it's just this is something you like you say consistency is the key consistency is the winner and it's a it's a medium term strategy it's not going to change your life tomorrow but actually mm -hmm. it could have a big impact on your business over the next six months yeah uh, and have, sure. have that sort of time frame in your head it's a six to 12 month thing i'm going to mm -hmm. do it every week and this is going to be the format of my podcast i'm going to put this kind of content out and uh, away we go. Right, right, for sure. Great, great advice there. Um, now, Matt, as we get ready to, to wrap things up, if you don't mind sharing some examples of different e-commerce brands that, you know, you're familiar with or, you know, you've either dealt with directly or you just in, in, in general you're familiar with that have successful 
podcasts and what are some of the keys to success that you've seen with these podcasts that are out there? Sure. So the first thing you have to do is you have to define what success means for you, right? right. So with an e-commerce brand, you could de- the, the, the easy thing to say is, well, more success or success for me is more sales, right? Yeah. So if I get more sales as a result of the podcast, then it's been successful. But like you say, there are other elements of success. I can think about brand awareness. I can think about something which helps me create content. So um, I might not get many sales through my podcast, but the reels that I get out of it and the YouTube shorts, well, that might send a whole bunch of people to my website, right? So um, you have to be really clear on what success is. So I have a podcast um, like you about e-commerce. And for me, success there is about, can I bring value to the listener? right? How do I measure that? Well, I measure that by the interaction I have from the listeners. Um, And so to bring that value, I have to bring great guests. And that's something else you you, you might want to think about. And actually, when it comes to your podcast, whether it's an ordinary podcast, whether it's an e-commerce podcast, the thing that I think people have missed over the years, focus too much on how many people are listening and not enough on who the guest is on my show, right? Right, right? And actually, If you focus on getting good quality guests, everything else kind of takes care of itself because those guests will share out the podcast to their tribe. Usually they're happy to do it. Um, They'll bring some level of expertise. You'll learn stuff, which you'll, do you know what I mean? And it will open up a network which you never had before. And I think, again, just be really clear on the parameters of success because podcasts can be successful in so many ways. Now, that said, um, you can obviously still measure how many sales are coming through your podcast just by using coupon codes in your podcast, right? And you Mm -hmm. see how many people put those in. Um, But I think brands, I think Patagonia doing a podcast makes a lot of sense to me. That's a Mm -hmm. good good brand. And same with Nike, you know, Nike is the obvious example of fitness brands, I think can do quite well with podcasts. So you've got um, on a smaller level, you've got someone like Julie Fouché, um, who's um, uh, she's known in the CrossFit world. So she's yeah. a sort of a, a doctor crossfitter and she has this podcast um, and off the back of her podcast, she built quite a successful personal training business in the, in that sort of whole fitness sphere, mm-hmm. um, which was like an online thing. So I was a member of it for a little while um, okay. and you pay Julie, whatever it was, 30, 40 bucks. And she would send you workouts to do, and you could email and you could, do you know what I mean? It was a really, it was a great little business model. Um so you could have something like that. Huberman, have you come across Huberman Labs? Uh, so he's constantly, Huberman is constantly in like the top 10, top 20 of podcasts. This guy's like a neuroscientist from Stanford. He's a he's a super clever bloke. And he's right. always talking about, you know, mind hacks and things like that. Well, he's joined forces with, uh, what's the name of the company? AG1 Green Athletics or something like that. Athletic Greens. Um, I think they used to be called, but it's a supplement brand. And so um, they sort of join forces and they've created like specific supplements that he's recommending to do what he, so his whole thing is brain science. So they may have created like a sleep supplement um, that he can then sell off the back of that podcast. Yeah. Uh, and so there's, there's all kinds of ways you can do this. We had one for one of our, um, a beauty company, which I've now sold. We had a podcast. And it was great. We would just interview people. It was a it was a really great podcast because we'd interview people who were in the industry, you know, different suppliers um, and maybe suppliers that we didn't have on our website, but we wanted to get on our website. So we just get the CEO on the podcast and say, hey, how's it going? And they're like, oh, yeah, of course you can. Do you know what I mean, it was great to build relationships like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we just had three people from the company, me and a, a lady called Rachel and a lady called Jan, who would some of the most beautiful people on the planet. And we would, our whole podcast was, we'd stand in a room, we had three microphones, uh, and we just looked at whatever was in the news that day, specifically like the beauty news, you know, like we'd buy, the girls loved it because it was an excuse to buy all the latest magazines and they'd read through and they'd go, well, what do you think about this article? And what do you think about this latest finding? And we'd have a Mm. conversation about it and it was really straight. And people loved it, you know, as an Mm. informative educational type show. And that grew our brand. So, um, yeah, I hope that's enough examples. I could keep going all night, but they. Oh no, yeah, that's that's been awesome. Yeah, I mean, you just kind of reinforce the fact that 
it's um, th there's so many ways that you can benefit from it. And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be just direct sales. So it's like, even if you're not getting, you know, direct sales, you're not getting the thousands of downloads, you're not hitting the 10,000 download mark, or anything like that. That doesn't mean it's not a success. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one other, um, I guess, added benefit to the podcast that I've seen for, for us doing this podcast for all of these years has been it, it becomes a, a, a good piece for introductions to people that you're trying to partner with mm -hmm. or you know develop a relationship with um if you use the podcast as a vehicle of of saying you know um reaching out to you uh we think you'd be a great guest on our show you know you're not really asking them for anything but of course mm -hmm. you're you're eventually you want to foster or grow a relationship yeah, because yeah. They, they have something that you want. You want to be able to collaborate with them. But, you know, you don't start off with that. You, you immediately start off with, you know, we just love to have you on the show. We get such mm -hmm. and such downloads. We get this amount of exposure. So you're, you're, you're coming into the, um, you know, the introduction there with just what you're offering them. And then podcasts these days are, are a great way to do it because there's so many people want to get out there, want to be more visible. I they do know. they do and you can easily go and find people on amazon who are whatever your niche is you know whatever your so, so if it was the beauty industry we would just go on amazon who's, who's writing a book about beauty at the moment what books are being released in the next few months right well let's just go contact those authors hey do you want to come on the show well, of course they want to come on the show because they need to promote that product right they yeah. the publishers are like yes go on to every single podcast you can what's wrong with you exactly. uh, and so I remember the. I don't know if your experience was like mine. The first two seasons of any podcast that we we did when we were starting up um, a few years ago was it was hard work. You know, you'd have to go out and invite people to the show and hustle a little bit. Yeah. Um, but after maybe season two, I didn't have to do anything after that mm -hmm. because all the podcast agencies knew we were out there. They'd somehow connected with us. They were yeah. sending guests to us left, right, and center, mm -hmm. and we were like. This is awesome. I don't have to go and find these people. This is great. And mm -hmm. so, again, this is where consistency is key, isn't it? After a few months, the agencies find you. They send uh, people who they think are going to be a good fit for you and your audience. Right. And you obviously get final say, yes or no. And you can decide whether or not you want to you want to interview them on your show. And I think <laughs> it's really easy after a while. But it's yeah. It's like you say, it's that forming of relationships. So you can be super strategic like we were. We were like we want to sell this guy's product on our website. That brand is not really having anything to do with me. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not getting anywhere through the normal channels. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to write to the CEO. I'm going to go, Hey, we would love for you to be a guest on our show. We think you've got a great story. We think you could have some great value and we'd love to chat to you about, you know, how X, Y, and Z brand is doing. Yeah. And they're like, this is cool because every CEO usually has an ego the size of a planet, right? And so <laughs> by inviting them onto a podcast, uh, you're you're stroking their ego and you're mm -hmm. appealing to ego. And that's okay. That's fine. And so come on the show. We have a great conversation. We start those relationships, like you say, and you just you never know where it's going to lead to. Yeah, yeah. You, you never do. And you, you, you're totally right about that. These days. Yeah, every CEO wants to get out there, wants to mm -hmm. be on the podcast. Everyone has an ego that, you know, they want to they want to stroke. Um, and I, well, the last thing I want to kind of double up on and what you mentioned is the, um, the the fact that once you do get out there, you get a little bit of traction. There are a ton of these podcast agencies who represent, you know, uh, CEOs, they represent marketers, people that just want to get out there and get placed on podcasts and so mm -hmm. once you track you they're gonna they're gonna find you because yeah we were very fortunate early on uh, when we started the podcast that uh, right when we started it there were some initial agencies that picked us up and then once that happened we s consistently have got a steady funnel of guests i mean it's more more yeah. guests than we can even schedule yeah, yeah. exactly so we, and that's how it, got... that's how it turns out right so you yeah so you can then start to be a bit more strategic about your guests. Now, exactly. here's, the, here's the bottom line, right? So if you're listening to this and think, right, I'm going to start a podcast and you're nervous, you're kind of thinking, I don't know necessarily what I'm going to talk about. We need to find our voice. Here's my top tip, right? Do your podcast, but realize that the first 10 episodes you do are going to be rubbish, right? <laughs> Right. They, they're going to be ones where you go, what was I thinking? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You're not, it's, you're not going to create your best work. But you know what's going to happen is over the first 10 to 20 episodes, you're going to find your voice. You're going to find your rhythm. And you're going to find a format of a show that works really, really well for you. And 
just accept that as fact and just keep going just keep asking the questions and keep smiling and be proactive go if you google podcast agencies thousands of them will come up just send emails to them all say hey listen we've got this show we're talking about dot 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 if you've got any guests we'd love to hear from them right yeah and it and and they'll come trust me they'll all come but be strategic think about who your guests are going to be maybe not too much for the first 10 20 episodes while you're finding your voice but once right. you've got your rhythm everyone wants to be on your podcast right so you can be much more strategic you can be much more picky and you can go you can actually go for big names you can go for famous people quite a lot of them will say yes so you know they've all got to do promotion right yeah this is very true well, that's awesome, Matt. Thank you for sharing that. I've, you've, you've really kind of uh, empowered us with a lot of uh, practical information for businesses that have been thinking about it. And, uh, you know, the key, the key takeaway is uh, there's really no excuse not to try it, you know, um, even if it doesn't seem to be an ex- success initially. Um, there's a lot of ways you can utilize it to to benefit your business. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's really any business that couldn't benefit for, uh, you know, from a podcast uh, for sure. Um, well, uh, you know, I always like to kind of switch gears um, with my final question before we let you go. Um, if you don't mind sharing one c- kind of uh, closing fun fact about yourself that you think our listeners would be interested to know. Oh, wow. Uh, OK. Um, probably the, th- the thing that interests a lot of people is there's a there's a legend in my family. Uh, my grandmother told me um, and it relates to my great, great, great grandfather um who was uh, a member of uh, given that you know we've just had uh, the the queen's funeral broadcast on tv uh bless her um who was so in there is a there is a legend which says somewhere in my past uh i had a grandfather who was part of the establishment uh mm. shall we say he wasn't i think he was an earl and you understand I've not verified this because I quite like the fact it's a legend and I don't ever want to change it. <laughs> gotcha. um, and so there's the, my grandmother was convinced that um, there was an Earl uh, in our family and uh, it's very romantic. And he, 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 he fell in love with a common girl and had to renounce his claim to mm. his inheritance because such were the arcane rules that we had back then. Right, uh, and so he married a common girl. So there's this thing in my family that actually we're you know we're super romantic. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not sure my wife would agree. Uh, <laughs> she says to me, "They used he used it all up. It didn't go any further down." Uh, but it's quite nice to know that somewhere in my past there was there was Landon Gentry, and we gave it all up for love and and romance. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's uh, quite a story there. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, you, I mean, you just never know. Who you're linked to in your past, uh, relatives. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, no, I have thought about, should I go investigate and find out if it's true and see if I've got any claims on anything? But then I kind of think, no, 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 no. <laughs> let's, just, let's just leave it as a romantic notion and, and, and keep it at that. I hear you. I hear you. Leave it at a, as a legend. Well, well, awesome, Matt. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, lastly, do, before we do let you go, um, if you don't mind letting our audience know how they can reach out to you, if they'd like to pick your brain any more about, you know, all things e-commerce, podcasting, you name it. Um, if they want to reach you and then pick your brain, what's the best way for them to do that? Sure, absolutely. Just head over to the website, mattedmondson.com. Uh, okay. You'll find all my social media links there. You'll find a link to all the companies and all the stuff that we do. Um, but that's the best way to get hold of me is through that site. Find the social like on Instagram. Just come find me on Instagram and, and direct message me and just say, hey, be, be great. Or ask you questions and I'll try my best to answer them. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll definitely have that link uh, to your site in the show notes. And uh, we appreciate you having you on, uh, Matt, on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Oh, it's been great. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with everyone you know. Are you looking to take your digital marketing to the next level, but are tired of weeding through countless YouTube videos with unproven and untrusted marketing strategies? Well, we have the answer for you. The More Sales Every Month Online Digital Marketing Course. In this information-packed course, you will learn effective keyword research, link building, content marketing, and much more to attract and convert your site visitors into paying customers. 
Just go to moresaleseverymonth.com and sign up today for a low one-time fee. In addition to this power-packed course, if you would like to get access to a growing repository of digital marketing articles, PDFs, and eBooks, check out getosi.com slash resources and opt in to get full access to our library of priceless marketing information to help you take your digital marketing to the next level. 